This episode of Future Cities Africa is brought to you in partnership with Digital Council Africa. Vino Governor is my guest today on Future Cities Africa. He's executive for strategy, mergers and acquisitions and innovation at Dark Fiber Africa. He's dubbed by one of my previous guests as an awesome person. Vino, welcome. Give us a quick tour of your background and some major highlights. Thanks, Dan, for the intro. Um, so uh, background, uh, I've been here at DFA for the, for, for the last five years, um, ending up uh, uh, innovation uh, strategy and m and but spent a, a lot of time in, in the industry over the last just over 20 years um, at all the mobile network operators um, in the similar role, strategy, product development, uh, go-to-market uh, innovation. And, 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 and at the OEMs as well, spent some time at Nokia Siemens as well as strategists for them. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, fairly or fair with the, with the with technology, um, strategy, um, how technology gets used, um, you know, from, and, um, and the regulatory um, environment shaping how, you know, um, the, the industry structures itself around these technologies um, and goes to market in, a, in an efficient manner. On the topic of smarter cities, it seems like the term smart city has been taken out of context over the years. I'd love to know what is your definition of a smart or smarter city in the African and South African context? You know, uh, Dan, you're right. I mean, you know, I often find that when we talk about smart cities, it just gets associated with technology, sensors and data and that kind of stuff. Um, uh, my, my view is, is, is I, I, I would consider a city smart is when these investments in not just technology, but in social and human capital are done in an efficient manner and a synergistic manner. And then, so, so, the, so firstly, we invest in the capacity and capability, social technology and human. Um, and at the same time, we create an environment uh, that's supported by policy uh, that's supported uh, by governance and that's supported by uh, collaboration. And, and this enables the inner city, especially in the African context, to deliver on the sustainable de development goals in a sustainable manner. Uh, that's, that's how I would view a smart city. It's not just about technology. So what would be the typical architecture of a smart city and kind of the technological layers that make up a smart city? Well, you know, we could... A, a quick reference, you know, if you if you run through what I would refer you to is the Aussie model, right? So typically, if you break it down from the bottom, you need to have the the physical infrastructure out there. So um, and that's something that we do as DFA in, in ensuring that we deliver the fiber infrastructure. But that's the uh, you know the, uh, what we call the passive infrastructure and like masts, towers, uh, ducting, aggregation points. So you. Well, over and above, they're not just that, the supportive infrastructure as well. You need power, you know? You need sustainable power. You need power that's on. You, you need, um, so, so, you know, you have that infrastructure in space. So that's the first layer of the infrastructure. The second thing is that from an infrastructure level is what makes an, in the, what will make a smart city smart is that platform layer. And the platform layer is important in that, you know, it needs to be open. Uh, it needs to be non-proprietary. It needs to be have the ability to ingest data in different protocols and make it available in different protocols. The platform also um, needs to have. So, having said that, that the platform needs to have the the APIs, so that innovation can be driven uh, not just by the custodians of the city. I mean, you'd find that the skill for developing relevant applications does not necessarily sit within the custodian being the city. It sits with entrepreneurs out there, innovators out there. You'll find in a city, uh, the training colleges, the FETs, the universities, you know, um, you find, or that's where the developer community sits that will de develop the relevant applications to, to run a city. So, so the physical infrastructure needs to be there. The second thing is that the, the platforms need to be there in a very open manner. And we, uh, you know, uh, we, we very, we drive an, the open access model uh, so that, meaning that, you know, anyone can consume up it. And so, so that's the important thing. Um, so that needs to be the end. And, and a very important part of that platform environment is the ability of the city to harness data from multiple points and make that data available 
to third party developers uh, so they can develop the necessary applications. I mean, a simple example I, I'll, I'll refer to you is, you know, one of the poster childs of smart cities is Barcelona. And what they've done as a city is harnessed a lot of the city data and made that data available out there to the developer community. So that's the, that's the second part of, of, of you talked about infrastructure. And then I would put in, 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 in inverted commas, which are also considered as infrastructure, which because they're not tangible infrastructure, but the governance part of it, you know, because you need to ensure the data is secure, that you that you have privacy uh, taken into account, that you have security. Uh, you know, the last thing that you want, some cybersecurity, the last thing that you want is for someone to, you know, if you're running a smart city, is to get access to key applications, um, you know, distribute a DDoS attack on it and hold the city at ransom and its citizens. So, so, so that governance security type of, um, a layer of the input commons infrastructure is important as well. well. What are some of the key barriers to South African municipalities achieving smart city status? You know, what will stop us from becoming smarter cities? I think, you know, what would help us in becoming smarter cities, let's rather put it, what would rather help us is a very, very clear, detailed strategy around it. Uh, you know, and that's specific to that geographic area as well and citizens, right? Uh, you can have a template around it, but it needs to be very, you know, specific to that level. And, and the reason why I say that is I've often looked at what we call the IDPs. Um, so if you, you know, if you run through it, in, the integrated development plan is a plan that municipalities and kind of cities put out stating what the objectives are for the next three to five years. That's the, you know, so it's spatial planning and that kind of stuff. But uh, I often find that, uh, you know, it needs to be, it lacks the level of detail. So, so when I say the level of detail, and I'm, I'm going to just paint it a very high helicopter view of it, right? You need to understand here, here's our starting point as a city, right? What do we want to achieve in being smart? What are the different services or applications that we want to deliver that firstly enable us to run more efficiently as a city internally and also deliver value or enhancing um, uh, capabilities to our citizens, business and, you know. So if you have a, a, a very clear a roadmap of that, right? so that's the first thing. So so understanding where you are. So, and that means like, if I am a city here, what, what do I want to do, uh, deliver? So I want to deliver government um, information services as an example um, uh, to on health or whatever. So what are the different applications that need to stack up? If you know the, what that roadmap is the, as a starting point, then you can quite then build out what your platform um, architecture needs to look like. So what platform do I need to have to deliver all these services, right? And which other systems need to come into these platforms? So, you know, do I create the APIs for it? You know, how do I create, and how do I ensure then you know, that the water department, you know, whether they're doing smart water media or the electricity department or the roads department that are, you know, responsible for road maintenance, you know, alerts and portals, maybe through an app or, you know, the, um, the issuing of way leaves in a more smarter digital managed way. And, you know, so, so, you know, so you have a roadmap of these things and then you, then you can, you can, you can scale out your platform. So that so your broader strategy in terms of what you want to achieve informs your platform, or your, I would call it architecture, and, and then would also then start informing your network architecture and what type of technologies that we use. So we may decide that hey, uh, for uh, for the um, for all our sensors as an example, for all our smart meeting, we might choose here's a platform that we're going to be using, and it needs to ingest data from. Um, from an NB-IoT network or, an, uh, or a Sigfox network or a, um, or, or a mesh Wi-Fi network. But, you know, you need to find something and, and decide as a city, okay, what platform and what technology will you use so it becomes scalable. And scalability is important because it reduces the, the price point to the end user and also reduces the price point to the, to the city itself. So, and that informs, so, so that's what I mean by strategy, understanding what your application roadmap being understanding what your te technology roadmap is going to look like, and then understanding then what is my network architecture roadmap is going to look like. And that's important because once you have these things, then we can then move to, okay, we need these things. 
um, how then are we going to build it? And that's when you have the basis of saying, okay, what does the city have? What skills, what capacity, capability do we have? Do we do it on our own? Do we have the, do you have the scale to do it on our own? Or who do we partner with out there? And that's important as well, because you find a lot of that type of skill and competencies, core competency that may sit in private companies. And that's when you can start talking about these public-private partnerships. So what public-private partnerships do we build on the application roadmap, on the um, on the platform roadmap, on the on the um, on the on the network architecture type roadmap, and 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 that's important. And so, what does then that, that achieve? That creates an iterative type of model, right? Because once you have that, then you de develop one or two applications, and you start ingesting data. And once you get data in, you start using that data, and like I mentioned, exposing the data to the development community, and they create newer applications some of which may already sit on your, on your first roadmap that you've drafted, but hey, do not underestimate the power of innovation and the smart developers out there and the youth out there, and they will start developing stuff that they feel, hey, I need this, but it doesn't exist. Here's the data, let me fetch it, there's an API to fetch it, develop it, and then in, ingest it into the platform, and, and that's how we, we also you know, drive innovation in a smart city as well. So on the topic of triple P's and uh, collaboration, how do you propose we improve public-private sector collaboration? You know, there are some barriers in place. Who needs to take the first step? Or what are some of the suggestions that you have? So I'll go back to my, to my point to saying is, you know, let's get the strategy right in detail. And, and maybe, maybe, you know, some cities are further than others. Uh, uh, I think it's important and um, that we cannot develop the template um, uh, you know, what's the detailed template for a smart study strategy? Um, because we may look at things, like I mentioned, we can talk public-private partnerships, right? But unless you understand what capabilities you have within the city and what capabilities you require that don't exist there, you know, that's the platform or, or that, that, that's the, 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 the point of discussion to say, okay, where do we need partnerships? So um, I think that, the, you know, a clear clear, uh, detailed distal strategy and strate strategic execution plan is the, is the starting point for discussions around public-private partnerships. And, and because if you look at, uh, if, let's look at it, right? What do you, what are the big type of inventory items do you want from a public-private partnership? Funding would be one of those things, right? The other things, is, is it just funding? It also require capability, right? capacity and capability, you know, um, development capability, uh, data science capability, um, um, app development capability, support capability, innovation capability, you know, so where do you get that from? And, you, you know, only once you've done your strategy and, and understand where the gaps are, can, you know, you have the starting point to talk public-private partnership. And, you know, I must say, you know, uh, I, I've, I've worked with a number of studies as well, uh, and, and, and let's look at the big metros, right? You've got, you've got, um, you got city of Johannesburg as an example, with many universities and students around here, you know, that can help with it. Um, uh, you've got a lot of the vendors that sit here, you know, it's the same with uh, Durban and Cape Town. Even when you move to smaller towns now, you know, you know the fact that we're all working online now means that, and, and the fact that we've got uh, platforms like Azure, uh, Amazon uh, and AWS, in South Africa already, that provides a lot of the software capability in a cloud environment, means that, hey, there may be a smart developer that doesn't even sit in the, in the city, it can be working from anywhere, you know, and they can once again, you know, access the data, access the platforms, you know, uh, through broad connectivity and, uh, and develop uh, smart city solutions, uh, you know? So, so we've got the building blocks for public-private partnerships where do we fit the building blocks in? And that's what I'm alluding to. Moving on to IoT, you worked a lot on Sixfox with Squidnet. How do you see IoT impacting Africa over the next, say, five years? You know, we've got a number, and I always refer to this because I remember the, the, the early days when we kicked off uh, Squidnet, um, which is the South African license operator of the Sixfox network, in terms of what's the value proposition of it? You know, and, and you can map a lot of, we actually you can map every 
one of those uh, capabilities that an IT uh, network such as Kudnet brings to achievement of the sustainable development goals. Um, let's look at one of the sustainable development goals such as water, which is an issue not just in South Africa, but in Africa per se, right? And you'll find that, you know, the ability to proactively, you know, to give a voice to a meter and make it a spark meter so that you can proactively, you know, um, determine leak detail, leak, do productive leak detection, you know, make customers aware on the app real time of the water consumption. Because on this, you know, I've seen so many people, not that they, uh, they see what they're consuming and I'm referring to, you know, prepaid electricity meters, they come, their behavior changes because they become much more conscious. My wife, like, it's like every day we use so many kilowatts. We use so many kilowatts yesterday, <laughs> you know, put the pool pump on. When you see it, you become, it changes your behavior. And, and that's just one example of how, uh, you know, giving a digital voice to something like a meter changes behavior around the, around the scarce resource such, such as water. And even electricity, okay, it is a scarce resource in the South African context. But if you look at the, at the, at, at the, at, at the production chain for electricity, we're burning coal. That carbon gets into the atmosphere. So one of the other sustainability goals where we're talking about air quality in maps back straight to that. Comes back to, you know, and I'll choose just one more, um, which is very relevant now, you know, uh, and, and, and one of the sustainable development goals was around communicable diseases, specifically malaria, and then yeah, COVID eat us, right? But you find that how, and IT is not just about census, right? It's about harnessing data in real time, um, analyzing it, making predictive uh, and real time um, impactful measures in terms of in, to mitigate risk. And we've seen how, you know, uh, using um, uh, a track and trace technology from a phone using your location and, and movement type of issues has enabled us to, to an extent, to an extent, you know, manage and curb the risk of, of infection. So, uh, you know, so IoT, you know, maybe this is a topic for, for later discussion, you know, we'll figure out a talk around that, is, is, is critical in, 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 that, in that context, um, not just from an Africa, South Africa, but an African perspective. It delivers on, the, uh, on our efficacy of meeting our sustainable development goals. So if I gave you a magic wand, what one piece of legislation or one way of thinking or doing would you change in your line of work or your industry? The one thing I would always um, want to uh, say up the meter on is on the level of collaboration um, that we have. We exist in an ecosystem. The ecosystem is made up of us as technology partners, network providers, you've got app developers, you've got device, you've got regulatory, you've got government, uh, you've got the private sector, is always to up the level of collaboration because that enables us to align in, in a direction that we're going and ensures efficiency in what we deliver because time, it's, it's all about time and, and at time we never more just for time like we are now. What are your hopes for cities over the next five years? Africa and South Africa, what would you like to see? For me, over the next five years, the first thing is for, for a city to, to exist, uh, smart cities, is one of the key things is you need to have the connectivity around it, right? Uh, and the infrastructure. Over the next five years, I would assume that, hey, we've solved all of our, infra uh, we've solved most of the foundational data infrastructure requirements. I'm talking, and when I'm talking infrastructure, I'm talking power, uh, utilities, um, um, you know, fiber deployment, uh, tower deployment, um, um, wireless technology deployment, so that we can get that done. At the same time, you know, we, we, we would have had a, um, an, an, a line template for strategy for, 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 for cities to type of kind of execute on, plan and execute on. At the same time, we, um, you know, we would have implemented platforms and we're not talking just about technology platforms, but collaboration platforms that enable us now then to, uh, you know, bring on those, uh, those partners, uh, get the data available, get it exposed, get the wider, wider community, development community, uh, device um, develop, device manufacturers, OEMs in. And at the same time, while we're doing that, which is important, so we talked about infrastructure, but at the same time, in parallel, we have accelerated our investment in social and human capital, right? And that's where, you know, you need upskilling, 
uh, knowledge transfer capability building so that we have the tools, we have the capability to use the tools, and then we can apply these things to iteratively uh, have delivered on our sponsored journey.